Mike Tyson to the left. You remember Cus D'Amato, the man who managed Floyd Patterson to heavyweight titles, not once but twice. Where has he been lately? Working with this young man whose own background is remarkably like Patterson's. Cus now lives in the quiet of the Catskills in upstate New York, an old soldier of the boxing wars who had faded away. But recently, he's found a new reason to get excited in the person of a 17-year-old heavyweight named Mike Tyson. Like Floyd Patterson, Mike Tyson grew up in the slums of Brooklyn, in his case, here on Amboy Street in Brownsville. And like Patterson, he had a troubled boyhood. Arrested at the age of 10, by the age of 13, he was in his fourth reform school. But a former fighter of custom autos was a counselor at that school, and he got Mike released in custody of his old trainer. Got him released for one last chance to save a kid. I feel that all boys growing up in the environment that he did would require help, patience and perhaps understanding, because I tried to make him feel, and I hope I did, that I understand this kind of life. I grew up in a tough neighborhood myself. Who have already fought. From the beginning, even at age 13, Mike was determined to make his mark as a boxer, and in the gym near Cuss's house, he showed a strength and determination remarkable for one so young. Won the National Junior Championships at 14 and at 15, stopping all his opponents by knockout, and this year, Mike won the National Golden Gloves, registering four KOs on the way. They seem an odd couple as they spend endless hours studying old fights. The professor preparing his student on the skills necessary for survival in a dangerous sport. When Mike's mother died last year, Cus became his legal guardian. The effect of their relationship has been tremendous. Cus has always been a loner in the shadowy world of boxing, but he has indeed struck a responsive chord in a young kid who appeared to be headed toward a wasted life. They couldn't hear it. Mostly it just changed my life because he helped me to deal with people. I know how to deal with people now. Before, I just couldn't, I couldn't talk to people. I used to always want to be alone. I, and now I learned how to deal with anyone. I could talk to anyone, even about their problems. And it's like a father and son relationship. You know, even though he is my manager and trainer, sometimes I forget that because of the way we are. I can say honestly, I have a very deep affection for him. I do. To me, he's my boy. He's with me. But I often say to him, you know, I owe you a lot, and he doesn't know what I mean, but I'm going to tell him now what I mean. Because unless, if he weren't here, I probably wouldn't be alive today. The fact that he is here and doing what he's doing, and doing as well as, in, as he's doing, and improving as he has, gives me the motivation and interest to stay alive. Because I believe that a person dies when they no longer want to live. Nature is a lot brighter than people think. Little by little, we lose our friends that we care about, and little by little, we lose our interest, So finally we say, well, what the devil am I doing around here for? We have no reason to go on. But I have a reason with, with Mike here, and he gives me the motivation. I will stay alive, and I will watch him become a success, because I will not leave until that happens. Final 201 pound weight limitation. Mike Tyson, whom you've already met, against Henry Tillman. Quick further word about Tyson just extraordinary punching power. The upper body strength evident as you merely look at him. The upper arms enormous. The boxing skills perhaps developing, but certainly relatively minimal at this point in time. After all, just 17, but a superb teacher in custom art. Henry Tillman, on the other hand, is an experienced fighter with a good left jab. Does not have a lot of punching power for the size and weight, but he moves well for a heavyweight. Excellent foot movement, and this fight, as we begin the action, Tyson will have, I think, some greater difficulty in reaching him, though he goes with that right lead right there than he had against Milligan, the young man from Princeton University, whom he finally caught in the second round and did away with. First round action, and you see Tillman quickly moving on his toes. See that? Usually you get less and less movement 
as you get into the higher weights. And we saw very little movement in the Womack bout against his opponent, Benny Hurd. But here you're seeing Tillman move. The expectable strategy to avoid the thunderous power of Tyson. Third man in the ring in this bout is Jerry Dusenberry. Another of the accomplished officials I've discussed. He will not, however, be one of the four going to L.A. to work. First round. You've got to do for three sustained rounds what Tillman is doing right now to stay alive against this young man. That much can be said. An enormous punch. He can paralyze you with a blow to the belly if he connects. Tillman well aware of that power. Seeking to score with the left jab and get out of there. Move, move and keep scoring as he did right there and right there. That's what Tyson wanted. He got him against the ropes and down he went. champion of the world. Some laughed at that at him when he made that prediction about Floyd Patterson. As you've seen, the background awfully similar to Floyd's. Different sections of the same borough, Brooklyn. So we have had one knockdown and we're still in the first round coming to the end of it. But remember, the knockdown in scoring counts for no more than a good, clean jab, and Tillman's landed a lot of those. We're going to stay. We'll go to Mike Tyson in his corner. Putting a quick bat on the left ear. From his handler, Kevin Rooney, let me make it clear, Cus D'Amato does not work the corner. Cus is in his mid-70s now, and you heard the magnificent thing he said about Mike Tyson. He said, this young man motivates the continuance of my life. He's what I live for now. And you look at the replay, the right cut in, and then another right. And Tillman started to buckle, and the third right was what put him down between the bottom and middle strand of the strands of rope. The bell for round two. Just keep the jab in his face, the handlers told Mike Tyson. Tillman quickly again on his toes, moving, 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 usually to the left. When you see a big man move, inevitably, you think back to the heavyweight like no other ever in history in terms of foot speed and, for that matter, hand speed. The name, Muhammad Ali. down by DeWitt, the big Canadian heavyweight favored for the Olympic gold by many. He was knocked down, as I said, by DeWitt, but then came back. And in the next meeting and lost a toughie three to two to DeWitt. If you watch closely, 
Tillman is fighting very cleverly in this round thus far and effectively. He's scoring with that left. He's continually moving. And young Tyson, only 17, is having trouble deciphering. Well, Tillman right there. Scored three blows and then a fourth. And Mike relying on that wild lunging right. Inside the final minute of the round. Tyson desperately trying to get to Tillman, having clawed him once in the first round. His aim for the referee to stop the contest. But he's got to score to do it. He's got to knock the opponent down to a point where he can't get up. He must rely on the knockout because Tillman is building up points very clearly in this round. Points by a huge margin, at least in my opinion. the opponent's strengths and his vulnerabilities. The final round, it is conceivable that the bout could hinge on this round. Tyson scored his knockdown in the first round. That by itself wouldn't win the round for him. It was a close round. Second round was overwhelmingly tilted. So, in the corner, they told Tyson, get him into a corner. Get him against the ropes. You've got to have a big round. You've got to pour it on him. Easier said than done when you're against a more experienced fighter with much better foot movement. Still there is that stunning power of young Tyson. But as I have mentioned several times, you go into a tournament like this, you must go in as a boxer. You can't just look for the knockout. There's Tillman flicking that left again. It is conceivable, based upon the box-off procedure that I described at the very top of our telecast, that these two could meet again on July 6th. It is conceivable. Remember, the most noteworthy opponent is selected by a duly appointed board. Coach Pat Nappy is one member and a very influential one of that board as Tillman keeps working the left. And Tyson has not been able to do what Kevin Rooney in his corner asked him to do. Get him against the ropes or get him in a corner and bang him. Right there, he's trying. Tillman covering. Tyson has very little time left. He scored there, indeed. The crowd always looking for the knockout. Inside of 50 seconds, now left to go. Tyson scoring there with a the right. In the last 30 seconds, he is suddenly connected. Not once, but several times. But look, he keeps his distance from Tillman, and he'll never knock him out that way, as Tillman just keeps working the left, using the ring, covering well left, fighting back. Tyson's attempted onslaught. And we're near the end of the fight. So there will be no knockout by young Mike Tyson in this fight. Though there was a first round knockdown. The bell. And it should go to Tillman easily. 
In the meantime, don't forget this coming Saturday from the famed Wingfoot Golf Club in Mamaroneck, New York, maybe the most prestigious golf title of them all, the U.S. Open. And Jack Nicholas, I am told, has shot 64 and 69 at two practice rounds. Be with us. The decision. exactly what you had to expect after a tough first round that might have been given to Tyson Tillman was clearly superior in the next two rounds it was an unanimous decision and the scoring was close in each and every judge's card but it was unanimously and properly for Tillman I said they might meet again in the box off so they might Tyson continues to improve as a fighter.